This is Being Awesome with Rob Springer. And you're listening to Being Awesome, the podcast about loving Transformers and having fun. I'm Rob. Holy crap. This week in Awesome, TFCon Charlotte. It's next weekend. And to coincide with that, my good friend Dusty Griffin, who did the art in this year's TFCon Charlotte comic, asked me to give a, a, some give him some pointers about TFCon. He's never been before. And you know what? Maybe you guys listening have never been to TFCon before. Or who knows, maybe just new at conventions in general. So I figured with a week to go, it'd be a good time to get out some pointers. Uh, first thing I can think about, your hotel. Whoever's reserved the room, it would be a really good idea to give them a call a few days before you head out. Just make sure your reservation's still good. Not that it shouldn't be good, but anything can happen. And when I say anything can happen, anything can freaking happen. In fact, when I went to a uh, BotCon 2010, I used Travelocity to reserve me a hotel in Kissimmee, the neighboring town, to the resort. Everything was all good. I already paid for my room when I got, did the Travelocity thing. Get down to Florida, get down to my hotel, try to check in. They had no clue. <laughs> Travelocity had never faxed them over the form. So I had it took like an hour on the phone with Travelocity for them to give them, send them the stuff till I could get in my room. You know, stuff like that can happen, and it's a pain in the butt. You know, when I went to Savcon in 2012, I had reserved a room at, it was like a, one of those like, um, like, I don't want to say extended stay lodge type places. It was like a, uh, home, like a suite style hotel, you know, meant for basically extended stay, like a week long stay or whatever, more, a more comfortable hotel room. It was like a block away from the hotel and I got one of those rooms and, you know, I checked in no problem. But there's also a family reunion going on at the same time in town. And that hotel was packed with people coming from that family reunion. And so many other people were not, weren't getting their rooms despite having reservations. You know, they made their reservations. They tried to check in. The hotel didn't have any room. So that's where calling ahead of time basically gives you a little... Uh, little insurance or assurance for the whole situation, you know, make sure everything's going right. One thing I also always suggest, if you can, and you don't have to, but it's a good idea, print out your confirmation email. You know, they sent you one when you made your reservations. If you print it out, when you, when you come to check in, usually they want your confirmation number, they want your ID, all that. You hand them that form. Now, pet now that print out confirmation thing go, yeah, here's all my stuff. They're going to pull you right up. Just want to see your license and your card. Now, that's not always, but every once in a while you get that one guy who's going to take forever entering everything in the computer. And there you are showing him your phone. My phone's in the other room. You're showing him your phone and like tapping every few seconds when it goes to the lock screen. Like, can, can I have my room? You know. So in case you get that one guy, and every hotel has one, that's a good way to expedite the process. Now, you at the hotel. You checked in. It's time for pre-registration. Assuming you're there for pre in time for pre-reg pickup, you might want to know ahead of time when you should, should be there. Because usually they say about six, seven. It's a good idea to get there early. And if you're meeting with friends, maybe you can arrange with your friends to all sit and wait in line. Because, you know, even if you're paying at the door, it's a good idea to go ahead and do it there at pre-reg. That way you can pay for your stuff, get it all taken care of, instead of being in line early in the morning, Saturday morning. Not to mention, you can get it all taken care of, and you're done with it. And it doesn't take long. These lines move really fast. It's TFCon. They're efficient. Uh, not to mention, there might be some stuff you want to buy that you didn't buy when you pre-regged. You can take care of it all right there, and you can get the most important thing you're going to need to have for the weekend, your schedule. You know, they post a tentative schedule on the website, but things could change last minute before the event. 
you grab that schedule and you can plan out the events you want to go to and work it in with stuff like going in the dealer's room, hanging out with friends, getting some lunch, you know, that schedule is your key so you don't miss out on anything. And then if you do miss out on something, it's on you. You know what I mean? You, you're an adult. You have to plan out these things, you know, because you're going to want to eat, to eat something. And if you go to lunch, when the voice actor panel is go, like 10 minutes later, it's a bad idea, <laughs> you know. Now, speaking of, if you're staying at the convention hotel, for attendees of the convention, you get complimentary breakfast. They have a complimentary breakfast buffet. This is worth its weight in gold, because as you know, it's really hard to work in meals at a convention. Not to mention, hotel food's expensive. Free buffet? No, not too bad. So you can go get your get your breakfast you know really fill up because lunchtime is really hard to squeeze in the lunch at a convention it's just it's just really hard to do it i always tell people to bring snacks you know a lot of people say protein bars or little, little like granola snacks or you know those little bags you can get at the store i like fruit snacks you know put, put, up, put a couple of those in your backpack and you know you eat a pretty good breakfast those you know with some snacks, you might be pretty good till to kind of make a little stretch so you can get out to get some lunch. You know, it's a good idea because you know the Snickers commercial says you get angry when you're hungry. They're not lying. Everyone does. You're only human. And if you have dietary needs, you really shouldn't mess with your blood sugar too much. You know what I mean? I froze. <laughs> Um, it's just really important to take care of these things. And the old joke, the joke is being to the ground that people stink at conventions. I've even made a joke a million times. I said, people smell like a cup of soup, hot dog water, uh, old hand towels, Lionel Richie's butthole, you name it. B.O. can be rampant. You don't want to be the guy with B.O. So make sure you you bathe up, keep yourself clean, put some deodorant on, maybe a little axe, not too much. <laughs> you know, and axe is not a substitute for height bathing. I have to put that out there because there's always that one turd who thinks, I'll just spray some axe on. You still stink, and now you smell like douchebag over here stink. So, you know, just kind of freshen, make sure you clean to be pleasant around because you're in a crowded space filled with a bunch of other people. It's unpleasant and you don't want to be that person you just don't want it it's disgusting not to mention it kind of sucks for you too you know it, you're cramp you're, you're in a tight space sometimes you might be kind of really kind of squunched up with some people and if you're kind of sweaty or whatever you're gonna feel gross you know one thing I do occasionally I'll go to my room for a few minutes to maybe drop off some things I bought or use the bathroom, get a few minutes to myself, you know, I do that, you know, these things, it's a good time to freshen up, you know, the washcloth, the wet washcloth, just kind of clean myself off a little, I'm, I'm a big fan of shower to shower, uh, you know, that body powder, just kind of put a little of that on, so I feel fresh, a little touch up deodorant, you know, that way I'm just, it's one of those things where you're just around a whole lot of people, and it's just a good idea to be, be aware of yourself, you know, and speaking of, Dress appropriately. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be like nagging old poop head that wants to tell you how to dress and wear clothes and whatnot. But, and we, we've all got that t-shirt that doesn't quite fit over our belly. We all have one. We wear it around the house or whatever. That's not the best time to wear it. Because first off, people are going to make fun of you because you look ridiculous. Second off, it's, you're in public. You know, dress decently, you know, dress comfortably, but dress decently. Be presentable. You know, you wanna you don't wanna be, like I said, that stinky guy with a t shirt with a hole in it and it's like his man boobs hanging out. You know, you don't wanna be that guy. You don't wanna be the person walking around with a cape on and like a pair of dirty sweatpants. I've seen it. It's horrible. The therapy I went through and I still can't erase the memory. 
you know, you don't want to be that person. Now, you know, hygiene, meals, stuff like that. When I said bring clothes, you know, you go on a trip, you always bring a couple of pairs of pants and shirts or whatever. And you know, I always make the joke is, I got a couple of shirts, some pants, a hoodie, 50,000 pairs of underwear. Anything can happen. It probably wouldn't be the worst idea to bring you a couple extra things to wear just in case you get dirty, you get sick. Something might happen. You might have to stay an extra night somewhere. You know, you never know. Now, and this is a big now. Talking about the con more proper, other than just little hygiene things or dietary things. Cash. You're going to need to bring some cash. I know it's 2015. If you're like me, you barely ever have cash on you. I never do. Whenever I do, I feel like, whoa, what am I going to do with this crap? Bring some cash. There's going to be an ATM at the hotel. It's probably going to run out. It wouldn't be too bad of an idea for you to leave out, hit up your bank, bank's ATM, and get you some money out. And here's why. Sure, a lot of the dealers have those card readers now where they can run your you know, your credit debit card and you can pay for them right there. Not all of them are going to. So it's just a good idea to have cash. Not to mention TFCon doesn't charge for autographs on top of the registration. Uh, like some cons do. You know, you to keep the costs low, the uh, guests are allowed to charge whatever for autographs right there. Well, that being said, at $25 for an autograph from Richard Newman, he's going to want cash. You know, he's not going to swipe a card. A dealer who's like selling thousands of dollars of toys, he's, he might have that. But the guy selling prints of his artwork Probably just gonna take cash, and that's okay. But you need to have it. Not to mention, I don't know if you guys, but I hate swiping my card for like five dollars. I just hate doing that. Not everyone's like me, but it's just a good idea to always keep cashing these things and keep track of what you got because it's really easy to spend cash like it's nothing, and next thing you know, you don't have any money on you. That being said, also, those guys with the little e-card things, I keep holding up this uh, pestilence box because I have my phone. <laughs> my phone is usually on me at all times, so this is kind of weird. Those people with those little card reader things, either they got on a tablet or phone or what have you, or some guys might have a little setup with a laptop. Be prepared. You might have to call your bank or your card issuer. And the reason I say that is... You might be making a large purchase at some kind of at a more, at a kind of a random. However, those things pop up. It might trip your card security. It may not, but it may do. So be prepared to call that thing. And if it just happens, say, "Let me call my card," because more more than likely it just tripped your security. Two minutes on that phone with them, and they'll free it up, and you can buy your things. But the best thing to do: be friendly. Go. I'm sorry. It must be tripping to security. Can you hold on to that and let me call them? I'll be back in five minutes. Make sure you tell them I'll be right back. And, you know, to you step over, usually I say, okay, sure. And then you go call. They'll ask you whatever. You get straightened out and come back and buy your stuff. Now, here's the thing. Even if there's a problem and something's wrong with your card and you have to go, go upstairs, be on the phone, or maybe go get you some cash or whatever, let the dealer know, hey, something's wrong here. That way, you're showing them the common courtesy, and they may not, they may wait for you to get the money. Or better yet, they may not hold a grudge against you and not want to sell to you. Or, most importantly, you just ask the person to do you a favor and you're following up. It's just one of those things you do as a person, just like, hey, I'm sorry, let me go take care of this. And even if there's a problem, hey, there's a problem. You, you can sell it to somebody. So I'm sorry, something's wrong with my card. They'll appreciate it because, you know, what goes around comes around and paying it forward is not just a catchy name for a movie. It's a way of being things. You know, you do good, good comes back to you. You know what I mean? I feel like Ernest saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but that's really that. You know, now, 
I said that schedule really check on that schedule because while earlier I mentioned autographs some of those guys may not be doing autographs all day some might be doing them at just certain times that schedule will tell you when and so you don't conflict with something else you might want to do now I said cash it's really easy to spend way too much money at these things and I'm not going to lecture you about spending too much money that's your business however if you're like me and you're just regular person working your job paying your bills it's you don't want to spend too much because you got to come back you still got to pay your rent you know you still got to pay your like electric bill that cat if you have cash and say this is my dealer with money it's a good way to keep yourself on a budget if you want to make sure not to spend more than a certain amount and we've all been there we've all said like hey I don't want to spend more than this amount of money and that's a good way to do it you know have fun but have fun responsibly I can't tell you how many times I've heard people like they part of budgeting is planning on paying bills late when they get back just so they have money and I'm not gonna tell you that's irresponsible that's irresponsible you gotta take care of your real stuff first so make sure all your ducks in a row are in a row before you go and buy that <clears throat> crazy third-party Metroplex it's like 500 bucks you know that's where you just need to let me a second let me wet my throat you know us RFC guys we love our cheer wine mmm it's really good and it's really really effervescent it's bubbles like a ton in your mouth and I'm a little little dry it's actually 8.30 in the morning and I just got off at 6 a.m. so I'm fixing to hit the hay but hey now I gotta take care of you guys first so yeah if you if you want to stick to a budget cash is a good way to do it now maybe not but you really need to make sure you're on your P's and Q's so you don't basically screw yourself out of your cable bill when you get home you know we're all people we're all you know all human we all have problems you don't want to create an extra one not to mention you have to get back home afterwards and you need gas money and you'll need to eat something you know stuff like that and not to mention you could get a flat tire or you might get stuck at the airport or something anything can happen and you don't want to be caught too unprepared now Conventions are notorious for exclusives, and Transformers conventions go hand in hand with exclusive items. This year, TFCon's exclusive items are leftovers from years before that they're selling at a lower price. And they're doing that because these uh, third party companies will make convention exclusives and they debut them usually opening day. Sometimes you might know of one, like they did some for the Canadian show, or they say this might be their summer con exclusive that they're selling at all the summer conventions. But a lot of them are going to be premiered when that dealer room opens Saturday morning. I'm telling you that in case you want the exclusives, be prepared to pay for them, and be prepared to look around. Yeah, TS Source, a lot of these guys will have them. And you, like I said, you may not know until that morning. About 50% of the time. But 50% of it, you won't know. So be prepared. Be on the lookout if that's your thing. Because they might have a Diaclone inspired Dinobot, you know, and some cool stuff. Um. There's something else I wanted to tell you guys. And I'm blanking on it. Oh, cosplayers. Have fun. Attendees. Be a little courteous of the cosplayers. You know, I, some people like to get handsy with them. And those costumes, you can break those costumes. Not to mention, that's a person. Don't get handsy with a person you don't know. Not to mention, when you see a cosplayer coming your way or whatever, try to make them a little room. They may not be able to see you. 
with their costume. That being said, cosplayers. You're walking through a crowded room in a costume you can't see very well through. Try to be courteous of the people that are also there so that you don't block them from getting anywhere. Or when you strike a pose for a pitcher, you don't accidentally block someone trying to get past you and hold them up. Sounds simple, doesn't it? I can't tell you how many cons I go to where someone's either aggravating a cosplayer or a cosplayer's holding up people from getting by. It happens every time. And I don't think either one of them was really meaning any ill intention. It's just the way it goes. So it's one of those things like be aware of yourself and your surroundings. No matter if you're wearing a cool costume or a hoodie from Kmart. <laughs> There's something else I wanted to say, and I can't think of it. <laughs> It'll probably come to me when I'm asleep. Oh, when I said the hotel gives you complimentary breakfast for attendees, there's also complimentary drink vouchers. So, enjoy them. Uh, a lot of times TFCon has themed beverages at the bars, both alcoholic and non. So, if you feel an experimental, those drink vouchers are a good way to try out the cool little drinks they'll do. And who knows, you might really like it. I think that's real. Oh, this was it. This was it. The one I wanted to tell you. Every time I hear these, these uh, convention tips or whatever, people always say, when you come into the dealer's room, go left. Because the majority of people go right. That's true and that's not true. I've noticed sometimes where they just kind of disperse everywhere, like just like a buckshot coming from a shotgun. And I have seen the times where they just go clockwise. Some conventions like uh, Joe Lana here in Atlanta, the dealer it's two different dealer rooms, and people tend to kind of go to the right and make a lap around it. And then they go to the next one and make a lap around it. I'm going to tell you, you know, go, go where there's less people. Because these dealer rooms don't just go in a circle. You know, they're set up, it's almost like a grid of our tables, table, table, and there's aisles. So if people are going left, people are going right, go the direction no one's going in. That way you can not be stuck crammed behind a bunch of people. And if you see where people are all piled up at, while you're kind of, I always say people rush in and buy stuff, peruse a little bit. Because, like, for example, this year, I'd like to get that Kabaya Seacon kit. I'm not going to jump on the first guy selling them. I'm going to take it all in and see what everyone's selling them for at different prices. Because like at Shardicon, you know, I wanted the Kabaya Fort Max. Everyone had them for about 30, 35 bucks. One guy had them for 25. Guess who I went to? And he was not the first person I saw. And he was not the first. I didn't, when I saw him, I remembered he's gone for 25 and I made a circle checking out why everyone charged for him before I went to that guy and bought him for 25 bucks. And that's what you do. Take in the prices. But if you see like a table with a bunch of people crowded up at, go there. Because that table either has one of those cool exclusives I told you about that just kind of no one knew anything about. Or they've got something really cool and you want to go see what that is before it all gets sucked up. But also be careful that you don't get trampled. Because it's a lot of people. Um, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> I think I've really covered it all. And you know a lot of the stuff is just common sense. You know have fun. Try not to be too big of a jerk to other people. They're there to have fun just like you. And no matter what your viewpoints are. No matter who you are, no matter what your crew is, we're all in this together. So but try to... Drama is very prevalent in this fandom. And at these conventions, it tends to pop up. So... Mind your P's and Q's and try not to get too involved in too much of it. And try to... Try to have fun. And I know I'm going to have fun. Because I love this. This is this is like I'm so happy I'm on Cloud Nine. Um, that was pretty awesome. This is being awesome. Like I said, check out the uh, TFCon this week. The convention comics drawn by my good friend uh, Dusty Griffin. He does really good stuff. 
Um, I'm Rob. You can find me at Rubble Rob Springer on Twitter and Tumblr, and sometimes on Periscope. But if you're following me on Twitter, you'll know what I Periscope. Um, be sure to check out Talk Transformers a Facebook group. That it's your best place to talk Transformers. Seriously. Um, come join, enjoy the fun. It's a relaxed, free-form, you know, conversation place meet up place it's you know only time anything's moderated when someone's being in giant dick hole so it's the most chill place you can talk transformers that's the name of it um you can find being awesome being awesome is one of the radio free cybertron family shows it's part of the family shows of radio free cybertron um you can find us on tfradio.net for such shows and showtimes this usually goes up on saturday uh, the video is Facebook exclusive, but I think we're going to start putting it on YouTube also. But, you know, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever, the audio version, it's there. It goes up every weekend. As well as so do our shows go out throughout the week. So, shows and showtimes, tfradio.net. And if you got to do any shopping on Amazon, please go through our Amazon links. Uh, that way, you don't spend anything extra, but you get to support the site. And that's pretty cool. Once again... Thanks for listening, everybody. You know, next week at TFCon, I won't have a show up ready then. But if you guys check the feed, you might find a, a special being awesome waiting for you anyway. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. See you guys at TFCon. And if you guys can't make it to TFCon, hope to see you sometime soon. I'm happy. <laughs> This has been Being Awesome with Rob Springer. 